So in the last video we learnt that atmosphere is a blanket of air that surrounds the earth and keeps it warm. Today we will learn that the atmosphere comprises of five distinct layers based on composition, temperature and other properties. So what are the five distinct layers? Well, they are the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere, right? Right. So now that we know that the name of the layers is very similar because all of them ends with the word sphere, right? But how do we remember them in order? Well, I have a trick for you. This simple sentence makes it very easy to remember the name of the layers in order. So the sentence says, trust me in the exam. So if you focus on the initials, you see that here trust. TR refers to the first layer and that is troposphere. Then we have ST that is stratosphere. The third layer here is for ME that is mesosphere. Moving on to the fourth layer we have TH and that is thermosphere while the last layer is EX that is exosphere. Right? So this way we remember the name of the layers in order. Right. So talking about the very first layer and that is troposphere. Troposphere is the lowest layer of the atmosphere and it extends up to 8 km at the poles and to 18 km at the equator. You must be thinking that the layers of the atmosphere are uniform, right? But in reality, it extends up to 8 km at the poles while up to 18 km at the equator. So the altitude is higher at the equator while lower at the poles. So what exactly the word troposphere means? Sphere, while we know, is the layer. It refers to the layer that we're talking about. While the tropos word is a Greek word which means turning, mixing or turbulence. Now, why such a name is given to the first layer of the atmosphere? There's a proper reason. Let's find out. This happens because of the presence of water vapor and dust particles in this layer. The water vapor goes higher into the atmosphere and it condenses on the dust particles to form water droplets. These come together as you can see to form clouds. Therefore, this is known as condensation. After that, it results into precipitation in the form of rainfall, snow, fog, etc. So these were the phenomena takes place in this layer of the atmosphere. Therefore, in the troposphere, we have the water vapor and gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, argon, etc. Also, some of these gases even absorb and trap heat from the sun. So now here we learnt about the first layer of the atmosphere. Right, so we have heard that the oxygen that we breathe in is present in the atmosphere. So why do you think that the mountainers carry oxygen cylinders with them? Let's find out. So as we climb higher, there is decrease in the amount of oxygen that can cause shortness of breath. So you must have heard about people who are aged or people who suffer from breathing issues. They avoid going to higher altitudes. Why is it so? Because of this very reason. The oxygen content is lower at the higher altitudes. Now why does this happen? This is because of the gravitational pull of the earth. So the gravity of the earth tends to pull down the molecules or the atoms of the gases to the lower layer, to the lower region of the layer. Therefore, it is denser at the lower region while it is less dense at the higher area. 
or at the higher region so if you look at this guy you see that there are fewer atoms pressing on this guy at the higher level while at the lower level several atoms are pressing on him so we can say that troposphere is the densest layer of the atmosphere because all the molecules of the gases tend to be concentrated at the lower region of this layer also about 75% of the total mass of the atmosphere is constituted by this layer of the atmosphere that is the troposphere right now as you can see that the mountains are covered with snow this picture refers to mount everest you must have heard that mount everest is the highest peak of the world so why do you think that these peaks are covered with snow this is because of the temperature difference at different altitudes as we go from a lower region to a higher altitude right so what happens that if you can see here at 0 meters or at the sea level the temperature is 30 degrees celsius now the temperature decreases at the rate of 6.5 degrees celsius per thousand meter so if from here we go thousand meters above there will be a decrease of 6.5 degrees celsius so at this level what happens is 30 minus 6.5 degree celsius will be equal to 23.5 degree celsius so we know that on going 1000 meters above sea level the temperature will be 23.5 degree celsius right so as we go higher 1000 meters above and above as it keeps adding the temperature keeps falling by 6.5 degree celsius so at 3000 meters from the sea level we see that the temperature that was 30 degrees celsius earlier is now 10.5 degree celsius now the decrease in temperature happens or keeps going on until we reach the boundary or the end of this layer and that is called the tropopause therefore tropopause marks the end of troposphere that is the first layer of the atmosphere now after the first layer we have the stratosphere that is the second layer of the atmosphere so we can say that tropopause that marks the end of the first layer on the other hand also marks the beginning of the second layer of the atmosphere and that is the stratosphere right so the decrease in temperature stops and the temperature of the atmosphere gradually starts rising so we notice that as we go higher the altitudes in the troposphere the temperature is decreasing by 6.5 degree celsius per thousand meter so as it reaches the boundary of the troposphere that is the tropopause the temperature stops rising or falling there is no change in temperature it becomes constant as you can see but after some time as it reaches or enters the second layer of the atmosphere that is the stratosphere the temperature gradually starts rising up so we see that the temperature fluctuation happens as we change the layers of the atmosphere so now let's summarize what we learned about the first layer of the atmosphere so the very first point is that it is the lowest wettest and densest layer of the atmosphere lowest because it's the first layer wettest because all the weather phenomena occurs in this layer of the atmosphere densest because it has the highest concentration of molecules of gases in this atmosphere the second point is it extends to a height of 8 km at the poles as we have learnt and up to 18 km at the equator. Thirdly, it contains about 75% of the atmosphere's mass. Then, all weather phenomena such as clouds, fog, rainfall, storms, lightning all occur in this layer of the atmosphere lastly it is separated from the stratosphere that is the second layer of the atmosphere by the tropopause 
So today we learn that atmosphere has five distinct layers. We also learn the trick to remember all the name of the layers in order and we learnt in details about the first layer of the atmosphere. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.